for watching. So we're checking out the Farley 5 from Trek today. Um, big changes for this year is they've actually included a dropper post. So if you don't know what a dropper post is, which a few people have asked, it's a pretty simple little tool which is completely unnecessary. Once you have it though, it is undeniably one of the handiest things you can have. So honestly speaking, it works just like an office chair. So you push a button on your controller up here and the seat goes up. As you push the button and put your weight down on it, it actually goes down and stays down. Big benefit to this is you don't have to worry about the seat being in your way on technical downhills or rough terrain. You can actually physically get it out of your way and then when you're ready, get it right back up. Otherwise, you can just use it to get on your bike on and off way easier. That's when you'll most use it. Either option though, they are super handy. So this is the Farley 5. Uh, this is the 2021 version. Uh, we are selling a boatload of these. We always do. They're very successful bike for Trek. They have an amazing tire on them. So these are Trek's own Narwhal tire and they are a studdable tire. So again, if you're gonna be commuting, it's really nice to put those studs in. Trail riding, it's not as needed. It is definitely more of a creature comfort. It gets you a lot of traction on that icy kind of unknown terrain. When it comes to trails, they're normally packed groom trails or fresh powder, and that's where the studs don't make a big difference. But it is nice that both the front and rear tires are able to do that. As with all of Trek's fat bikes, they are a 27 and a half inch wheel. Trek this year stuck to the Shimano 10 speed on these ones. So you do get that extended range cassette with a pretty low gear on it. Definitely not to the same degree as the 11 or 12 speeds available out there, but it's still a nice low gear range that most trails you should have no problem getting up. So the brakes that they come with these, they've came with a nice hydraulic setup to them. Hydraulic works no problem throughout pretty much all of winter. Maybe minus 30 degrees Celsius, you'll notice some kind of lag in it. But for the most part, the hydraulic fluids are rated for a very low temperature. We have not seen any issue with it. This is a dot four or dot 5.1 fluid in here. So it is SRAM. It is the same as what would potentially run in like your car brakes. So it's, it's designed for cold temperatures. It should have no issue with it. For the most part, they have all the cables externally ran along the top tube. So that includes your dropper post and then the rear brake cable. They do have the rear derailleur uh, cable going in the tube and out the bottom there, so it is, is a little cleaner. And then external brake cable on the front fork. This again makes for easier maintenance to it so you can access all these cables. There's less ports on the bike, so there's less chance of snow ice getting in there. So Trek's geometry designs with these mimic exactly or pretty much their Excalibur series. Trek is making this what they call a four season bike. You can ride this bike on the trails really fast, really efficiently all summer long. But with the size of tires and a slightly slacker head tube, you're able to take on a bit more deeper snow or sand or anywhere where it might be more difficult to ride. Even through marshy land or thick grass, these handle a lot nicer. They push through things and they stay on top of that surface a lot easier. You can run pressures as low as 8 PSI, potentially even lower um, in the winter and summer. There's almost no chance of pinch flats. Um, the tires are a high quality 120 TPI, so it's lightweight, fast rolling, which on tires this wide, you want a lightweight, fast rolling tire because that's going to be your biggest slowdown. When you are riding a fat bike, there isn't too much extra effort you have to put in. Uh, really, the coasting doesn't last as long, so if you pedal up to speed and stop, you definitely slow back down a lot faster. But while you're pedaling, they've geared it correctly, so it doesn't feel like you're pushing these big, huge tires, even with low pressure on them. Obviously, if you can compare them back and forth to like a 29er with a 2.2 on it, this is a slow rolling wheel. But overall, you don't notice it. It feels like a regular bike. It handles like a regular bike. They've done an excellent job with this geometry. Um, you do have a chance as well to add the second derailleur on it, the front one, if you want. So if you are wanting more range by that one by 10, a cheap alternative is actually to mount it. They have the pre-mounted holes. You can actually get uh, a derailleur for the front and put a two by on it. Not many people will obviously do that, but it, it's nice to show that it's still there. It's kind of like the USB compared to USB-C thing in the tech world. 
everyone wants a USB-C, which is a one by but throwing that old school USB-A on there is a nice little touch. It's not gonna do any harm. They have put standard bottles here, which is nice, but they have put offset options here, which allow you to carry more options. I know Wolf Tooth makes a cool system, so you can even carry more up there. Um, and they have done that with the BRAD system before in the Remedies, so they definitely know what products are out there. It's nice to see that they're actually integrating bikes to potentially add on these huge water holders or larger bag holders. With a carbon fiber front fork, there is no mount points to it, so you cannot put any bagging on the front. There is a few products out there which advertise can put it on there, but with the Farley's and the externally routed cable, I don't know if you'd still be able to do it. You do have rack mount points on the rear, um, but no seat post collar setup, so you would have to get a new seat post collar to adjust for that. As well, we have seen a few issues with the dropper post. Obviously, if you're loading up a huge bag, the dropper post isn't gonna work as full as it could because it's gonna get in the way of the bag. So keep an eye out for that if you are gonna load up the bike. Otherwise, Trek stock this well, lock on grips. Um, that carbon fiber front fork makes it a fairly lightweight bike where you're just over that 32 pounds. Um, it makes it very manageable, such an easy bike to ride and a very good job done by Trek. All right, that was a quick overview of the Trek Farley 5 from 2020. You should definitely get one before they're gone. The snow is coming and a lot of people are looking at them and if you don't live in an area of snow, you can still ride these year round. There's tons of people who do it. They're a fun, playful bike which can go anywhere. All right, thanks for watching guys. Good luck.